Hey, I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. I only do this channel to try to rip you off. Hey guys, welcome back to the Dr. Cliff AUD vlog. This is vlog number 204, and today I wanna to talk to you guys about my methodology when it comes to recommending high-level hearing treatment. But before I get into it, do me a huge favor, click the like button if you like this channel. If you don't like the channel, click the dislike button. Either way, you're helping out the channel. And if you are not yet subscribed to the channel with notifications turned on, go ahead and do that as well. With that out of the way, I greatly appreciate it. Let's talk about what I really want to get off of my chest in this video. So over the course of the past seven years of me making these videos, I have to say that the overwhelming response from people who watch my channel is that of appreciation and desire to for them to want to hear their absolute best, which is exactly what I speak to on this channel. When I started it about seven years ago, the whole purpose was to make sure that I educated people on the things they needed to know so they can get the highest amount of performance with their hearing aids, whether this was premium hearing aids, whether it was basic hearing aids, what have you, because the thing I focus on more than anything else is this idea of best practice audiologic care. Essentially, best practices are a series of procedures and considerations that must be completed in order to make sure that you maximize your performance with whatever hearing aids you actually use. Now, the thing about this is, is that any time that you're talking about uh, performing at the highest level possible or hearing your absolute best, it really comes down to a uh, discussion about time, right? Because in order to optimize anything, you need to make sure you have enough time to do so. And when it comes to following comprehensive best practices, whether it's myself inside of my clinic or any of my other providers in my clinic or any other hearing care professional who follows best practices inside of their clinic, it really just comes down to, it takes an immense amount of time to actually do that. On top of that, when it comes to the hearing aid recommendations that we make, yes, there's a, I believe, a higher likelihood of someone achieving their highest level of performance when they go with a more premium level device. Now, is this always the case? No, it's not always the case. Sometimes someone can achieve their best level of performance with going something less than a premium level technology. Um, but there is always this potential of leaving benefit on the table. But when you go with a premium level hearing aid, you are going to be spending more money. Now, let me give you a for instance, and there's a lot of these. There's a small subset of people who watch my channel who literally, I believe, watch the channel just to criticize my, my ways of doing things or my perception of the, the quality of care that's out there, uh, whether it's in, in my clinic or other clinics or big box stores, whatever, okay? Um, but there was a comment that was on the channel the other day that was basically saying Lyric is a great money maker. So Lyric is a uh, invisible in the canal hearing aid that you leave there for two months at a time. It's technically an extended wear hearing aid that is placed by your audiologist. It stays inside your ear canals for two months and then you go back in, they remove it and put in a new one. A subscription for Lyric. So Lyric works differently than any other hearing aid. It's not like you buy the hearing aid and then you pay for services as time goes on or buy it bundled and you never pay for services again. It is a subscription model, meaning that when you decide to start using Lyric, you pay $4,000 to $5,000 for a double ear subscription to these devices, which covers all of the actual devices that go inside your ears, as well as all the office visits for exchanges and, and what have you over the course of a year. And then at the end of a year, you have to go back in and decide whether or not you want to renew your subscription for another four to $5,000. And again, this is heavily dependent on where you live, right? So there, there was a comment on there that's saying, oh, of course you'd recommend Lyric because Lyric makes clinics a lot of money because every single year you're, you're dropping four to five grand again uh, on that treatment. And uh, so no one should ever do that because it's a ripoff. And I'm just like, I, I don't think that people understand the economics here, or at least this individual doesn't, because it costs a clinic a lot of money to have to pay for that subscription from the manufacturer. On top of that, Lyric actually takes a lot more time inside of the clinic and it can be relatively inconvenient for our schedules. Meaning if someone has a malfunction of a Lyric unit, they typically want to get in right away. There's no like loaner devices that they can use. They need to have their hearing aids swapped out and it has to be done by a certified Lyric audiologist. 
And so what happens is if someone has a malfunction, they have to call the clinic and it's like, oh, we got to squeeze you in right away. And so it disrupts the clinic flow substantially, but it also takes a lot of time over the course of the year to run all of these lyric exchanges. And so when you really look at it from a profitability standpoint, it is less profitable to do lyric inside of a clinic than it is to do a traditional hearing aid where you pay for the hearing aid, but then you pay for all of those services. It's a lot more predictable and a lot more structured. Over the course of time, yes, the, in, the consumer, the individual has the hearing loss is probably spending more money for the Lyric in the long run, but the profitability for the clinic is less, if that makes sense. And so it's, it's, it's that type of perspective that, that people come with on my channel and they just assume that I'm just trying to rip everyone off and that I'm just making these recommendations because it's what's best for me, not what's best for the, my patients. And, or, or not even my patients, but just anyone out there who has hearing loss. The thing is, is that different people find value in different things. So there are people out there who all of the benefits that you would get from Lyric, those are the things that they're actually looking for. They want invisibility. They want a device that they don't have to fiddle with. They don't want a device that they have to be adjusting volume, adjusting programs or anything like that. They want a simplistic option that they can, they can wear 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And they're willing to spend the whatever amount it costs to get that particular hearing aid with that subscription, okay? And to each their own, because there are things that I value and things that I don't value that other people find valuable, right? So for instance, I am not a car guy. I could care less about Ferraris, Lamborghinis, uh, Bentleys, uh, whatever these other really expensive cars are, right? Uh, but if there is someone who does value those things, there's nothing wrong for them valuing something that I don't value, right? And they might even be willing to spend several hundreds of thousands of dollars on one of these vehicles where I find it absurd to spend anything more than $40,000 on a vehicle myself. Um, even if I could afford something as expensive as those cars because I just flat out don't find value in it. But I can understand how someone would find value in something like that, like having a nicer car. That is just something that they inherently value and there's nothing wrong with that. And my whole channel is built on this premise of the highest quality humanly possible when it comes to hearing care. And I have no issues if somebody else doesn't value hearing the same way that I value hearing. And I can understand how someone would say, of course, Cliff, you value hearing because you make a living based on other people also valuing hearing. And I'm like, okay, guilty as charged. I guess if other people value it, then I make money on it, so why wouldn't I try to encourage people to value their own hearing, whatever, right? The thing is, is that I'm gonna to continue to recommend high level treatment. I'm gonna recommend primarily premium level hearing aids because I believe that leads to higher potential outcomes. I believe in following a strict best practice protocol where we spend an obscene amount of time with our patients to optimize their hearing treatment. And I don't think that my perspective on that is ever going to change. The only time that I ever do low cost treatment is essentially when I'm doing charity work and I'm essentially fitting hearing aids for free. I'm donating my time um, on my weekends when I'm typically recording video content because I typically either I'm working in the clinic or creating content seven days a week, right? Um, and if you don't value the information that's on this channel, then by all means, find a different channel to follow to get your hearing care information from because I have no interest in, in talking about like the bare minimum that you can do to hear uh, just better than what you are with your hearing loss alone, right? Um, or you can start your own channel and explain like why your methodology is better than mine because in some cases, guess what? Your methodology probably is better than mine. But I only can speak to the things that I'm passionate about and I'm just passionate about high quality care and the negative consequence of that is that you would have to potentially spend more money to get that higher quality of care, whether it's with me and my clinic or any other clinic that's out there that does things in a, in a high value way. Of course, I'll continue to allow these comments to be made on my channel. Um, it doesn't really bother me a whole lot. I just wanna make sure that I clear the air with everyone who actually follows my channel and believes the things that I speak of 
Um, and because I see, I see other people getting upset, other consumers watching my channel get upset when they see these comments from people who don't value hearing care the same way that they do. So I just wanted to essentially clear the air with that and, and let you guys know that like, listen, even if you don't value hearing care the same way that I do, as long as you're learning something from the things that I talk about, whether you agree or disagree is, is to some degree irrelevant. But as long as uh, you guys still continue to watch the videos, whether you like them or don't like them, I'll continue to make them. So let me know what you think about my, I guess, methodology when it comes to hearing care. Do you support it? Do you like the things that I talk about? Do you hate it? Do you think I'm completely off base and I'm just here to rip everyone off who has hearing loss? I just really want to know your opinion down in the comment section. And I really appreciate you guys. Thank you all for watching today's vlog. I know it was kind of all over the place, but uh, as always, I'll see you next week.